So Joel Embiid just came out and let the world know he wants to win a championship. Great mentality, right? I would love that. But he said, I just want to win a championship, whether it's in Philly or somewhere else. This was a man that had been with a franchise for a decade that just showed little interest in building around him. A guy that showed up in the big moments but didn't have the help. You know, I have my criticisms for Dame, but, you know, I could completely understand him saying I w- I, this exact quote. I want to win a championship, whether it's in Portland or somewhere else. No problem with it. You've given your best to Portland for years. They've never put a, a squad around you that gives you a chance for a championship. I think they've given them some big teams, but that's a debate to get into another time. Definitely no team that give him a championship. Joel Embiid. He said it when he won the MVP because a lot of people have switched up after the fact. There's a lot of people that were like, why is it Embiid MVP? Why, why would Joker get his third straight MVP? And then, um, you know, after the playoffs, they're kind of either silent and just not heard from or they're like, yeah, Jokic is great. Uh, forget about everything that happened in the past. No. The day, the moment Joel Embiid won MVP, I said it was the worst MVP in NBA history. I thought I was trolling. Crazy. No. He never deserved to be an MVP. He's not even close to an MVP player, and he's not capable of being the best player on a championship team. Been in the league long enough where we know that. And some people could say I'm hating. It's not hate. It's not hate. I don't know. what If you think that that's a possibility that he could do that, I think you're just crazy. It's not hate if I said that about other players that, you know, we know that we accept this about. That's a high bar, and Joel Embiid just does not hit that bar. This is a man that first got to Philadelphia, a team in the middle of the process where they've been drafting bigs with their early picks after early picks. Jaleel Okafor averaged 18 as rookie. Jones Noel looked good early on. And what did they do as soon as they drafted Embiid? Well, actually, as soon as he got back healthy, oh, they got rid of Jaleel Okafor and soon after, New Orleans Noel. And after that, what did they do? They put an end to the process, stopped acting like, oh, we're going to you know, play for five years in the future. We're getting guys to win now. And they still ended up building a team around them with Jimmy Butler, J.J. Redick, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris. Couldn't get to a conference finals with that team. Okay, you know, uh, maybe there's locker room issues with Jimmy. Obviously, there's not, but, you know, that's what they were saying. And then get him out of there. Now we've got, you know, eventually gets to, we'll go just straight to now. We won't go to every little iteration. Now you've got James Harden, who has been a great passer, just get feeding you the ball. Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, DJ Tucker, and you still can't get to a conference final. To an eight seed. Not to win the, get to the finals, but still, a beatable opponent. Actually, no, you didn't lose. My bad, losing to the Celtics. Ended up losing to an eight. And it would be one thing if you were hooping and these other teammates weren't showing up. Not the case. Not the case. Every time this team comes up short, it's Embiid coming up short in the big moments. I also said this when they lost to the Hawks, and nobody agreed with me. At least no Sixers fans agreed with me. When I was saying, yeah, Ben Simmons, he didn't show up offensively, but at least he did his part defensively. Trey Young didn't do anything in Game 7 offensively. And Embiid was nowhere to be found in the second halves of all those games in the postseason. And that man had the nerve to say that the game shifted because Ben Simmons didn't go up for a dunk. And I think he got to the free throw line. I think he made one out of two. He lost one point out of it. And that's where you want to say the game shifted. Oh, not because you weren't scoring all in the second half and Tobias Harris was the only one like even trying to score. No, no. It was because Ben Simmons. Okay, yeah, maybe, you know, Ben Simmons is soft. Get him out of town. He's the problem. And then you get to the playoffs again this past season. And again, game seven, look lost. You look like you don't want the ball. You look like you don't want to be out there. 15 points in a game seven. Didn't do anything in the, in the fourth quarter of game six. And, you know, was there any comment about I'm the MVP? It's, it all falls on me? No, it was, yeah, I probably got to get better. But you know what? It can't just be me and Harden. The other guys have to step up too. This man is a walking excuse. This man is a walking choker that has never gotten slandered enough for it. This man isn't even close to an MVP. Even statistically, he doesn't match up with Jokic or Giannis. This man is a whiner that has been babied by the media, babied by the NBA. He's not a top five player in the NBA. Maybe top 10, but if I'm counting injuries and the fact that I can't rely on him to even be on the floor, I'm not taking him in a top 10 draft of players, even for one season. No, keep that man away from my team. Injury risk? Horrible leadership, doesn't show up in the big moments, and this man has the nerve to be saying Philly or somewhere else, the team that is just constantly worried about building around him. 
you're a second round performer if you're the best player on the team want to go somewhere else to ride the coattails of somebody sure you can win a championship but this man has become the most i can't stand everything let me know what y'all think drop a comment hit that like and then subscribe yes sir